Before 1928, there was no effective treatment for infections such as pneumonia, gonorrhea, or rheumatic fever. Hospitals were full of people with blood poisoning contracted from a cut or scratch, and doctors who could do little for them but wait and hope. In this video, we'll explain how Dr. Fleming discovered the first antibiotic humankind ever knew. Hello and welcome to another episode of Endless Info. Antibiotics are compounds produced by bacteria and fungi, which are capable of killing or inhibiting competing microbial species. This phenomenon has long been known. It may explain why the ancient Egyptians had the practice of applying a politis of moldy bread to infected wounds. But it was not until 1928 that penicillin, the first true antibiotic, was discovered by Alexander Fleming, professor of bacteriology at St. Mary's Hospital in London. On September 3rd, 1928, Fleming began to sort through petri dishes containing colonies of Staphylococcus bacteria that cause boils and sore throats. He noticed something unusual on one dish. It was dotted with colonies, save for one area where a blob of mold was growing. The zone immediately after the mold, later identified as a rare strain of Penicillin notatum, was clear, as if the mold had secreted something that inhibited bacterial growth. Fleming found that his mold juice was capable of killing a wide range of harmful bacteria. Back then, he was tasked with the difficult task of isolating pure penicillin from the mold juice. Fleming was a famously poor communicator, which meant his findings were not initially given much attention. He was unable to convince a chemist to help him extract and stabilize the antibacterial compound found in the broth filtrate. It was Howard Florey, Ernest Chain, and their colleagues at the Sir William Dunn School of Pathology at Oxford University who turned penicillin from a laboratory curiosity into a life-saving drug. Their work on the purification and chemistry of penicillin, which began in 1939, just when wartime conditions were beginning to make research difficult to carry out a program of animal experiments and clinical trials, the team needed to process up to 500 liters a week of mold filtrate. They began growing it in a strange array of culture vessels such as baths, bedpans, milk churns, and food tins. Later, a customized fermentation vessel was designed for ease of removal and to save space. Renewing the broth beneath the surface of the mold, a team of the penicillin girls was employed at two pounds a week to generally look after the fermentation. In effect, the Oxford laboratory was being turned into a penicillin factory. Meanwhile, biochemist Norman Heatley extracted penicillin from huge volumes of filtrate coming off the production line by extracting it into amyl acetate and then back into water. Using a counter-current system, Edward Abraham, another biochemist who was employed to help step up production, then used the newly discovered technique of alumina column chromatography to remove impurities from the penicillin prior to clinical trials. In 1940, Flory carried out vital experiments showing that penicillin could protect mice against infection from deadly streptococci. Then on February 12, 1941, a 43-year-old policeman, Albert Alexander, became the first recipient of the Oxford penicillin. He had scratched the side of his mouth while pruning roses and had developed a life-threatening infection with a huge abscesses affecting his eyes, face, and lungs. Penicillin was injected and within days he made a remarkable recovery, but supplies of the drug ran out and he died a few days later. Better results followed with the other patients, though, and soon there were plans to make penicillin available for British troops on the battlefield. Flory and his colleague Norman Heatley traveled to the United States in the summer of 1941 to see if they could interest the American pharmaceutical industry in the effort to produce penicillin on a large scale. Yale physiologist John Fulton helped to put his British colleagues in touch with individuals who might be able to assist them in their goal. They were referred to Robert Thom of the Department of Agriculture, a foremost mycologist and authority of the penicillin mold, and eventually to the department's Northern Regional Research Laboratory, NRRL, in Illinois, because of the expertise of its fermentation division. This contact proved to be crucial to the success of the project, as the NRRL was a key contributor of innovations that made large-scale production of penicillin possible. Now, 80 years later, doctors are working around the clock to come up with new antibiotics that could help humans. If you like the video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and don't forget to ring that bell.